bit more about quadratics. So there's our basic parabola, y equals x squared. Together with the linear function, these two things, the quadratic and the linear function, they're basically the building blocks of all polynomials. I don't know whether you realised it or not, but every polynomial can be factorised down to a combination of linear and quadratic factors. And all other functions can be approximated by polynomials. So trig functions can be approximated with polynomials. Exponential functions can be approximated. So that makes the quadratic and the linear function so very important. Uh, just like I, I said with the linear function, same true with the quadratic function. We can transform the basic one by translating, rotating, reflecting, to come up with any uh, quadratic we like. So the basic one, recognizing it, this time when we look at it, we go, hang on, one of them's to the power of two now. So quadratic. A couple of ideas that you may or may not have seen. Uh, easier ways of finding the vertex and things like that. If we complete the square on the quadratic, we will end up with something like that. Uh, it may not be monic, so I might have a, a constant out the uh, front of the x minus eight squared. But when it's in that form, then I get my vertex straight away. Right? So HK would be the vertex. The A then, of course, is still telling us about the concavity. So it's the same question we did previously, but let's find the vertex using this idea. So X squared plus eight X plus 12. Well, I know it's gonna be X plus half the coefficient of X. So I'll end up with x plus 4 all squared. But when I expand that out, I don't get uh, 12, I get 16. Therefore, I have to subtract 4. So now I can read straight off that and go, oh, well, the vertex is minus 4, minus 4. X-intercepts, well, now it's in that form. I could do it by completing the square. Let's move the 4 over and we end up with minus six and minus two. Um, the question where we said, write down the quadratic whose roots are two and eight and the vertex is five, three. Well, if I know the vertex is five, three, then it must be in the form some constant times x minus five squared plus three. Now they've told me the roots are two and eight. I only really need one of them. So I'll use the point two, zero. If I substitute in, I can find out that k was minus a third. And so there is our equation. Um, I could expand the whole thing out to show that yes, it does turn out to be the, the same as we had before. So that's one different way of doing it. Using the discriminant, the discriminant, that bit under the square root sign, the b squared minus four ac, I can use that to my advantage. There's your vertex. Minus b on two a, of course, is the axis symmetry. And I think we all knew that. You may not be aware, but the y value will always be minus the discriminant on 4a every time. So if you've got a question which is saying, find the maximum or the minimum, you don't have to worry about finding the axis symmetry. You can just sub into minus the discriminant on 4a. That's gonna give you the y value every time. Of course, the, the zeros will be negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant over 2a, same as it always is. If your discriminant is less than zero, then we know there's no x-intercepts because you can't find the square root of a negative number. If uh, it's equal to zero, then we know we have one x-intercept. So it just touches it. And of course, if it's greater than zero, it has two x-intercepts. So rather than trying to factorize the thing, you can always check the b squared minus 4ac first to see if it's going to factorize. Or Same question again, but now we'll do it using the discriminant. The discriminant for this one turns out to be 16. So my vertex minus b on 2a, so minus eight on two, and then minus the discriminant on 4a, so minus 16 on four, again, gets me negative four, negative four, okay? So two alternative ways of finding out information about quadratics.